So if you've seen this video on my topics for free WooCommerce teams, you would know I'm very big on this 4Q user interface when picking a team for an online store. And despite having to review several teams over the years, I've always kept a close eye on this particular one in hopes to see some changes that's probably holding it back from making as much buzz compared to the likes of Avada and Flatum, even when it's got so much going on for it for the most vital pages. The link to this team you can find in the description, so please show some support if you wish to give it a try by using the link provided. So, at first glance, after taking a preview from the Team Forest Marketplace, we could get started by checking out the starter sites, which I think are absolutely brilliant with a well thought out process for the user interface. That we can tell when I open up one of these. Now, back to the Team's landing page directly under this starter site, we get to see a number of features the Team offers, ranging from the different product shop styles to the single product page styles, which are in the right words of elegant and user friendly. And all eight of these styles you can take previews of in order to make a choice of which to run with. This particular one just happens to be my favorite amongst them and it should be a perfect fit for store owners with high quality images to truly showcase product descriptions. And lastly, underneath the product styles, we get to see animated previews of what the filter system, quick previews and mega menus look like. And the rest underneath are pages you can always walk around to suit your brand. In all, this team does have a lot to offer and I could almost say it's all encompassing since the features you need additional plugins for are all integrated into this team, like the variation swatches for example. Now the main reason I feel most designers aren't particularly geared towards using this team, aside maybe its publicity could be because of the page builder used on it, WP Bakery. And while it can be a bit more intimidating to use compared to the likes of Elementor, it does hold its own when it comes to making visually complex designs most page builders are yet to catch up with. So, infolding the team behind this team could make this team more flexible with the most commonly used page readers, I feel it's bound to rise quickly in popularity. And with that said, let's head to our website backend to see this team in action. So after installing and activating this team, we'll get this welcome message under appearance and team setup. So I just need to open up the next tab to install the required plugins to first unlock the team's full potential while giving us access to the team's starter site. So let's do that real quick. Tick all six plugins, install, and then activate. Next, let's move over to the import demo tab. And for this video, we'll be importing the wristwatch starter site. And under this, we get the option to either go with the full import or specify what we would like imported instead. Let's just go with the full import. Tick all content and lastly, hit the import button. Let's confirm our request, we should begin the import. Give or take, we might just have to wait it out for about five minutes to finish the process. And because of the mass of content in import, you can always get rid of the ones you have no use for afterwards. Now, taking a first look at the website, the major problem we get to face from the start is that it doesn't actually import the media files that are displayed on the demo site. Rather, we get these media files with size dimension to replace these images with. And while I understand designing these media files can be a hassle, I still wonder what's the point holding back the media files after a user has actually paid $61 for your product. That doesn't seem fair. So at this point, while it's actually nice to have all the demo pages fully imported, I still feel having the images imported alongside will have gone a long way, at least help with the learning curve. So when confronted with something like this, best bet will be using an image grabber Chrome extension like Fatcone Image Downloader, which should come in handy replacing these blanks. And we could get started with that by making edits to the revolution slider. And the same also applies with the other sections underneath this. And we could get started by clicking on Edit with WP Bakery. And while I can say this page builder gets some getting used to, I still stand by the fact that it holds its own when it comes to designing some really complex design layouts. Truth is, with Elementor, you can as well replicate most of the designs, including adding products to your pages using product shots codes. And once we're done here, just hit the update button and that's about it. Now, while I was actually thinking about doing a quick run through at these pages that has been imported alongside the demo content, I thought it might just be overextending this video, just because you can still see the same content over at your end when you open up the starter site yourself. Now, let's take a look at the team option by opening up the customizer settings. And getting started, the first six options are pretty common in most basic teams, so I'll just skip past those to open up the general team options. 
and at first glance we can tell this team actually controls features most teams rely on third party plugins for. So starting off on our list is the under construction option which gives us control over an already designed page as the site under construction or maintenance page. The next option we'll be taking a look at will be the promo pop-up and just as we have the under construction page this helps us condition an already designed pop-up for our site and we can see the same on each demo template. So we get the choice to condition this on the entire site or solely on the site homepage. And by default, we already have one created for us, but just without a media file. So I just need to click here to open up and edit this pop-up. All I'm going to do here is replace the image, align it to the center, save changes. And underneath this, we can see some controls over this option. Let's update this and head back. And now if I select the promo pop-up, we should have that display right here. The next option we've got to be the 404 page. And we could get started by setting a background image to this page by selecting this to pick an image. And this options underneath controls the text we've got on screen. Underneath this, we've got control over this call to action button, which you can change its text and redirect links. Lastly, this controls the search feature while not leaving out the fact that you can make edits to the text colors. And heading back, the next option we've got here will be the scroll to the top feature. So let's say I scroll down this page, we should be able to see the scroll to the top feature right here. So this controls the display on mobile devices. This control what you would like it to say. And lastly, underneath this, we've got control over its typography. Heading back, the next option we've got to be the search block, which practically controls the look of this search box, but only color wise. We don't particularly have anything special to explore here, so that's a skip. Next, we've got the GDPR settings, which is turned off by default. So when I toggle this on, this is pretty much what we get right out of the box. And of course, you get to change its placement while detecting what goes into its content. And underneath this, we've got control over the overlay display, which I think looks good already. And lastly, we've got control over the content and buttons typography alongside its colors. And heading back, I'll skip past these two options, which are not entirely necessary in this context. So let's head back to the main customizer settings. And while I thought it may not be necessary talking about the header and footers, given this is always dynamic for all websites, but I feel we could take a look at the mini header option, which is something I always love a team having without having to create one myself. So let's enable this and from here I can choose between the number of options we've got imported alongside the team. And if you wanted, you could click on this to make edit to the existing ones or create one yourself by clicking here. So underneath this, we could choose where the mini header actually appears across the site with the range of options we've got here. And that should be all for the mini header. Which brings us to the title wrapper features, keeping the logo and fab icon. These two are pretty common with just about any team and as for the layout and content, I feel it's not necessary in this case, so that's a skip. So let's open up the title wrapper and I'm just going to open up one of the shop pages. And the option we're about to look at in the product archive page still applies to these other pages, but our focus will be on the shop page. So let's open this up. Now, I typically don't use title wrappers for the most part, so if your personal preference aligns with mine, you can just disable this. But with this enabled, you get control over the container style as well as a range of styles to pick from. So let's do center alignment. And underneath this, we get the option to leave or get rid of the title heading. Completely your choice. So this is where we get to add a background image to the top of the shop page. And the rest under this are self explanatory. I might want to leave the breadcrumbs turned on while this controls the position of the archive breadcrumbs. I'm going to leave this as is and this to align the breadcrumbs to the left, right or center. This controls the display of the border we've got set to the top and bottom of the breadcrumbs. And lastly underneath this, we've got full control over the fonts and typography as well as colors to all the elements we've made customizations to. Heading back, like I said, when we open up one of these, the same styling still applies. Now heading back to the main customization settings, let's skip past the sidebar and social share to open up WooCommerce. And while we've got quite a number of features to look at under this, I'm just going to touch the most important ones. So I'll skip past the first three to open up the checkout page. And I just love the fact that these two fields are hidden by default because I've always thought them unnecessary. 
and aside this, the rest underneath controls the typography and colors we've got on this page. So let's update this and head back to select the cart page. And as soon as this opens up, the first thing we'll see should be controls over the product cross sales. I personally try to keep the product, cart, and checkout page as close to free as possible. And with that said, I would want to toggle this off. Alright, heading back, the next option will go to be the mini cart. And if you notice, we can actually see the cart icon right now. And I could say it's partly genius, it's been conditioned not to appear when a user is on the cart page. But at the same time, I think things like this should be constant across all pages just for the user's sake. And the team certainly didn't fail to give us control over that. Alright, starting with the layout, we can see this actually appears in the format displayed here. And if you wanted, you could specify it appeared either to the left or right when the mini cart is clicked on. But I noticed when I change this, it doesn't immediately take effect till it's been published and viewed on an incognito tab, or at least after the browser cache has been cleared. Lastly, the rest underneath this controls the typography and colors of the mini cart. Now heading back, I might want to skip past the account page since there isn't much to work with here aside making adjustments to the typography and colors. So let's head back to open up the single product option. This part is easily my favorite just because I can visually get to see how the product layout looks like and while I was thinking about the best way to approach discussing this, I figured we might as well be able to see them on the demo site under the shop navigation menu and product page style submenus. Also, you probably want to study how the product information is laid out for each team before settling to use one of them. And under this various style, we get the option to change the variation swatch between this default drop box and the box layout. I like this one. And the best part is you get the variation swatch packed into the team without additional plugins. And underneath this, we get the choice to add a background image to this look. Next up, we've got the Ajax Add to Cart, which is this animated circle that shows up when a product is added to cart. The rest underneath this are by themselves self-explanatory, so I'll just take a minute or two to scroll down this section slowly so you can see for yourself the options we've got. Coming down to the breadcrumbs and navigations, this controls this, and the navigation option controls the visibility of this feature that appears when I briefly scroll down the single product page. This seems unnecessary, so I'll just turn that off. Underneath this, we've got the single product list, which controls the visibility of the related products, upsells, and its product columns across each device. And underneath this, we've got visibility over an already created product size guide. Lastly, we've got the typography and color customizations for practically all elements appearing on the single product page. Alright, scrolling to the top, let's head back to the mail comment settings to open up product archives. So we've got the layout style to have no sidebars, have it set to the left, right or on both sides. Best practice would be to leave it set to the left while specifying what goes into the sidebar and of course you can find this in the widget section under appearance. The next section we'll have here will be the style we wish the product archives to have and we currently have this set to minimalist. So just take a look at the shop styles over here to take a peek and we can use this interchangeably every now and then so the user have a different feel to your site whenever they visit. And underneath this we can specify the number of products in columns we want here and the same goes across all device. There'd be no need adding animation to the shop page so that's a skip. This controls the alignment of our content under the product images, which in most cases is best suited to the left or center. For the top filter, when enabled, this is pretty much how it looks, so you might want to settle for either the sidebar or top navigation. And if you wish to go for the top navigation, it's best to make this entire section full page, just like this. And most of the options underneath this are all little features the developers have thought to add on personal preference. Lastly, we've got control over the typography and colors of most elements on this page. Heading back, the next option we've got will be the quick view pop-up, which controls all elements we've got inside this model box. And most options enabled by default are justifiable, but then it all boils down to personal preference as to what you might want to enable or disable. Lastly, we've got control over the typography and colors of all the elements found in this model box. Now heading back, I didn't really see the use talking about these two options because I barely use or see use as use this. 
And the last item I want to talk about will be the general settings, skipping past this too. Now this controls the look of the info message and I kind of like the bold colors that confirms action like in the case when a product is added to cart. And just before wrapping things up here, we get a range of icons to pick from. This controls the product icons and this the header icons. And that should be all for this quick breakdown of the items and options I would love you to take a look at first before buying this team. Let me know what you think about this team in the comments below. Also, if you have additional questions you would like to ask, I'll be in the comments to answer them. A like would be much appreciated. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one.